Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. So, I told you guys last week I did a trade deal. Uh, bought a brand new Glock Gen 4 G17, Glock 17, 9mm. Told you I did a trade deal. And told you I would let you know what I traded this Glock to. So, you'll probably already see by the description of the video, but now it's time for the reveal. So, here we go. Ta-da. Okay, what we have here, and I have been wanting one of these for a long time. You can still get these. It's a Breda 92. This one is the Breda, Breda 92F. Okay, the Breda 92s you get right now, and that you've got for the last several years, you know, has been the Breda 92 FS. Well, this is not a FS. This is just a 92 F, chambered in nine millimeter. It's not loaded, it's got the magazine, nothing in it. Okay, we got the decocker. Decocker also works as a safety. So the reason I done a trade deal is for a long time I'd been wanting one of these guns. Even though you can still you can still find the the 92 FSs, you can find them in a lot of pawn shops, a lot of gun stores on the used uh, on the used side of the guns uh, your gun shops, your local gun shops. For years, I had been waiting, been wanting a 92 F because. I grew up, I was born in the mid-70s. I grew up in the 80s. And uh, these guns got real popular in 1987. They got even more popular in 1988. And before all that, before they started getting real popular, they were super, pop super popular in 1985. So remember these dates, 1985, 1987, 1988. This is kind of like milestone years for the Breda 92, Breda 92F. That's what we're talking about, not the FS, but just the 92F. So we'll go in order. In 1985, the United States military adopted the 92F. Okay, let me take that back just a couple steps. So, 1984, Breda said they threw their gun into the race. U.S. military was looking for a new handgun to replace the awesome 1911, which I'm still a fan of. This is 1984. Breda threw their... 92F into the race and said, try this one, see what you come up with. So the U.S. military contract, with their torture test, they had a bunch of different makers, a bunch of different firearms. Okay, the winner of that contest, the competition, that uh, the trophy was military contracts, was the Breda 92F. So in 1984... This Breda 92F entered a, a race, a competition with dozens of other, other firearm manufacturers. They threw their, their hat in a ring to see if they was good enough and cheap enough. I guarantee money had a, a deciding factor into it. But overall, good enough to replace the 1911 45 ACP. And the, one, of the, one of the reasons that I've read, that I've researched, that they did that, it's not that the U.S. military didn't fall out of love with the 45 ACP, but that's kind of the, you know, when the NATO was coming around and you saw a lot of these older calipers kind of being phased out for the more the, the NATO character, uh, calipers like 9mm. 9mm was one of them because I'm thinking in their their aspect of it is 
You've got seven rounds, eight rounds of 45 ACP, which is a fantastic round. I'm not going to get into this 1911, 45 versus whatever. This video is not about that. It's just about what I think the military wanted. They went from seven, eight rounds in a 1911. They went to 15 rounds of nine millimeter, less recoil. These guns right here, the reason I'd been wanting one for years. Uh, I even bought, here a few years ago, I even bought a uh, another one of these guns. I bought the M9A1, which it was a fantastic weapon. It's kind of similar, about the same thing, but this predates all that stuff. But comparing this to a 1911, you've got 15 rounds of 9mm, and... They're, they're not bad to shoot, very low recoil. If you're a any kind of marksman or you can be taught to shoot a handgun, you can shoot this gun with pretty reasonable accuracy. I mean, accuracy is not a question for these older Bredas, for any of these Bredas. These Bredas, the Breda company is the world's oldest firearm manufacturer. They've been around, I'm thinking, since the 1500s. These I don't know what they're making in the 1500s. I didn't do that much research, but you know, bread has been around for a long, long time. World's oldest firearm manufacturer. They're still in business. So, but this, this is uh, this is the beginning of the military contracts. They submitted it, the 92F. It come out the winter, and Brett said. There's your M9. It's a Breda 92FS M9. So this 92F became the M9. Same gun, just a, a couple smaller differences. We're not going to get into that on the video. It's internal. Um, I'm not going to get into that. But this is the gun they threw into the race, the competition, to win that milita military contract. But that's not the reason I wanted this gun. That's not the reason for years I've been searching for a, a 92F. My first memory of a 92F came along in 1987. And then also 1988. Because in 1987, this is the Lethal Weapon gun. In the Lethal Weapon movie, part one... They used a 19, uh, a Breda 92F. In 1988, the following year, Die Hard, man. This is it. The 92F, Bruce Willis saving Nakatomi Towers from thieves, terrorist thieves. Were they terrorists or were they thieves? They was robbing the joint. I don't know if you could call them terrorists. I guess they was. But, uh, you know, they was just thieves. They was robbing the place. You know, it was a holdup. But uh, in the late 80s, early 90s, you could not watch a Hollywood film without the Beretta 92F. Later on, Die Hard 2, when they done uh, Die Hard 2, they used the 92FS uh, externally, same gun. For the most part, internally, same gun. Same with uh, Lethal Weapon. Part 1, they used the 92F. Parts 2 and beyond, they used the 92FS. So, I like collecting uh, a few uh, movie props and stuff like that. And I really like childhood movie guns that I grew up watching on TV. And this is one of them I had been, you know, kind of chasing for the last few years. It's not the FS, which is the little bit later edition. This is the, it's the 92F. It's the ones that started it all for Hollywood, for the U.S. military. This is the gun they tested and when it came out the winter, victorious, it became the 92F and the M9. This is the same gun. So that, that should tell you a lot about these Beretta 92 guns. Super accurate. 
very reliable. Uh, they're just great functioning guns. They got a these earlier ones. They've got a decocker on the side. It's got a safe mode, which a lot of people don't like the safety. I mean, a lot of people, and even me, I've ordered a kit. The kit just hasn't came in yet. I'm going to delete the safety feature, so all it's going to have is a decocker. Uh, a lot of people love these guns. So fast forward to what we have now on the market, comparing this gun to some of your Glocks some of your SIGs, some of your Brugers, the smaller, more comfortable carrying gun. Would I carry this gun as a daily? If I had a choice between this and something lighter and smaller, probably not. This ain't nothing I'm gonna carry. I didn't want this as a carry piece. That ain't why I wanted this. I wanted this for nostalgia. Um, I bought this guy, it wasn't an even trade. I got some money on my end, I'm not gonna say how much. But he was happy with his brand new Glock 17 Gen 4, which is fantastic firearms. I, I, I really love a Glock, especially in the Gen 4, the G17, and the 9mm full size. Fantastic guns. Nothing wrong with them. But I wanted this piece. I wanted this because it's in fine shape. I'm not going to say excellent. It's got a couple of marks on it. I was a, I'm, I don't need fancy, so I'm, I can live with that. It's got a couple of scrapes on it. It's not beat to death by no means. Came with two magazines. So, you know, I can live with the condition on this. And plus, like I said, it wasn't an evil tra uh, even trade. Got a little bit of money on my end. Um, but if you find these old Bredas, especially in the Breda 92F, if you find them at the gun store, the pawn shop, wherever you find them, don't be afraid of these guns. These are phenomenal guns. These are great home defense guns. I'm not going to throw out the the great carry guns because they're they're a alloy alloy frame, alloy slide. They're a bit on the heavy side. Which when I first started carrying, I carried a full size 1911. So. I'm a man. Weight don't bother me, if you know what I mean. But anyway, compared to your Glocks, your polymer lowers, th th these guns are a lot heavier. But as far as accuracy, far more accurate than your Glocks and a lot of your other striker fire guns because these this is a ha this is a hammer fired. In my opinion, better trigger, more accuracy. But I just wanted to show you guys. I told you I would show you what I traded that Glock uh, Gen 4, G17 to. And this is it. Super excited to get it. Uh, never, could, never could find one. Well, take that back. I found these here and there over the years, the 92F. I have found these, but they either want too much money for them or they'd be in pretty poor condition which, like I said, this one's not a 10, but this one's in really good condition. It's a shooter. I've already shot this gun. Shoots fantastic. Nothing shoots like a Breda 92. For all you gun guys out there, you, you striker fire uh, gun guys, get, if, you've never, if you've never experienced shooting a Breda 92 with a hammer, and single action or double action, you don't know what you're missing. Heck, this could be, next year, this could be, you know, the new carry piece. I kind of doubt it because of the weight, but they're just so much fun to shoot. And that's the video for the day. I just want to show you guys what I traded that Glock 17 to. Like always, thanks for watching, guys.